Lucas, you're the editor of Informable, a very important website internationally on nuclear news. Now, it's been two years since the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant disaster, but if you look at all mainstream media, it would seem that uh, like nothing much happened. No, they've definitely done a very good job of regurgitating the same small amount of information and really downplaying the key uh, details that have come out in the last two years. And I think that what we have seen is a direct attack on any attempt to not downplay the issue or to uh, highlight some of the key details that I think the future generations and key policy experts really need to be paying attention to coming out of this disaster. What's behind what some people are calling the Fukushima cover-up? I think you're seeing a lot of political currency being put behind it. I think that you're seeing a lot of reputations are on the line over this because you have 50 years here in America of repeated attempts to manipulate and persuade the public that, number one, nuclear weapons and nuclear reactors are two completely separate entities and do not involve themselves in the same conversation. That, I think, was really destroyed by the Fukushima disaster, which released infinite times more in, uh, energy release than from the Hiroshima or Nagasaki bombings. Uh, at the same time, we are also starting to see the ways in which the politics and the lack of credible science has been uh, manipulating, sorry to use that word again, but also leading the way that we uh, put uh, policies and legislations which govern the nuclear industry as well as our nuclear weapons complex. What should we know about the impacts, the consequences of Fukushima, which in fact we're not being told? Uh, the first thing I think you should know is that they're unknown, and at this point they're unknowable with the data that we have. Anyone that I believe tries to make a definitive statement to downplay or mitigate the risk is really doing so at a risk of their professional reputation, because if you don't have the data, then any attempt to say that there is no risk is based on an opinion that could be just the same as an errant guess or a dart thrown at a dartboard. Uh, without the, that data that we have not been released by TEPCO or by the Japanese government, even the United States government here with our EPA RADNET system, then uh, I, I see that as a very big professional liability. In terms of the impacts beyond Japan, there were impacts here in the United States. I mean, there was a dispersion of radioactivity, and some of it came in the winds to this country. But then there was this very mysterious shutdown of uh, some of the monitoring stations in this country a few months after the accident. Could you elaborate on, on like what happened and what do you think it all means? Well, when we look at the releases, you have the aerial release, you have the aqueous release into the ocean, you also have the deposition from the air release, which most of it was released onto the ocean. Uh, one of my main concerns then is with the, the tsunami debris. You have top floating debris, which is moving at a slow rate of speed across the ocean in the primary path of deposition where the uh, most radioactive materials fall out. Uh, yet, even though these are ionized materials, which are not going to be washed off by ocean wave activity, we have uh, representatives and state officials here in the United States who are downplaying the potential contamination and radioactivity in the tsunami debris. And that's one thing that we're very concerned about. Um, secondly, with regards to the RADNET, I think we really found out how inadequate and broken that system is. And this is the way that they talk about it internally within the NRC and EPA. They recognize the fact that this system was not meant to detect the iodine that they, because the, uh, the delay in time between collecting the samples and analyzing the samples allowed the majority of the shorter-lived isotopes to decay beyond our ability to accurately detect where they were when they were passing over or being deposited on lands outside of Japan. Now this is the current administration, the Obama administration, involved in, well, three months after the accident began, the monitoring stations all over the United States, which had been monitoring the stuff coming here, uh, well, on a daily basis, suddenly went to uh, not a daily basis anymore. 
And you, you really want to look at the Obama ties with the nuclear industry. You have to go back to his time in Illinois, which is one of the largest nuclear producers in its own state. If it was its own nation, last I saw it would be the sixth largest nuclear producing nation in the world. Uh, you have multiple facilities, even the, the Zion facility, which is being decommissioned slowly. Uh, and I think that we are seeing the fact that our elected officials, without public pressure being put on them to maintain the standards and the integrity that we elected them to, are very much swayed and uh, moved by the nuclear industry and the influence that they exert. What about Japan? For a while there, we had a government in Japan uh, led by a prime minister who said, this is unacceptable, this is intolerable, we must close down all the nuclear plants uh, in Japan. And uh, go on the path, and in fact, Germany went on after Fukushima. Let's go to safe, clean, and renewable energy, wind and solar and so forth. But then, after a while, he, well, another prime minister took office who is for nuclear power, wants to reopen all, was it 53 nuclear power plants in Japan? Like, what went down, what is going down in Japan? Well, I think a lot of those policies and that changes that we are seeing is directly from pressure being put on outside of Japan or by the nuclear industry itself, which in Japan they call the nuclear village. Uh, the people of Japan, the citizens, are staunchly against these new proposed measures. They celebrated when Japan passed their no nuclear in the future policies and they are now attempting to uh, well they're still protesting they're still showing up every day at the diet um, I think we're seeing a larger divide between our elected officials around the world uh, in, in nuclear countries and between the constituents which they represent